The Buddha once compared consciousness to a magic show. You can make things appear and disappear, but none of them have any substance. You can think about something you did 30 years ago, and all of a sudden get you all worked up. And then in five minutes' time, you drop that and you can go to something else. And what seemed so important five minutes ago is suddenly nothing. They've done studies of how magicians work, and they take advantage of something that the mind does. I mentioned it this morning. Like we don't live in touch with reality. We live in touch with our cartoon ideas about reality, our perceptions. Those the Buddha compared to mirages. They bear some resemblance to something someplace. But when you get close to them, they disappear again. The magician will get you to be interested in one sketch. He leaves false clues all around, and you begin to stitch the false clues together, thinking that you've caught him. In the meantime, he slips something in in the blank spaces in your cartoon idea. That's how the magician surprises you. you know, if our cartoon ideas were simply entertainment, there'd be no problem. But we make our decisions in life based on them. We decide what to do and say and think. And if our cartoons are distortions, we can create a lot of trouble. I mean, every cartoon distorts to some extent, but some distort more than others. What the Buddha is offering us is some understanding of how the mind creates its cartoons. and how it can use its cartoons in a skillful way to arrive at something that's not a cartoon, something that's a reality. It's not a perception, it's not consciousness, it's not any of these insubstantial things that the Buddha talks about. He compares the body to a lump of foam on a river. You may have seen them sometimes in a forest. Tree sap gets mixed with the water and it turns into a lump. Bubbles come through it and the lump of foam can travel down the river quite a ways, but there's nothing there, no substance. Feelings are like the little circles that appear on the surface of water when rain falls. They appear and they're gone. Perception is like mirages. Fabrications are like a banana plant. You peel away the layers in the banana plant, looking for the core inside, and there's no core. And consciousness is that magic show. So the Buddha is offering us a sketch. After all, everything we do has to depend on a perception of some kind. We can't comprehend all the sensory input that's coming in at any one moment. But he's simply saying, focus here. See these things as important. what the mind is doing right now to fabricate its experience. Focus there. Make that your cartoon. And it'll lead you to something that's much more substantial than any of these things, something that's not an aggregate, something that's not a cartoon. But we need the Buddhist cartoons to get there. I heard one, someone saying that what the Buddha offers us is a map, the Dharma is a map. And as we all know, maps are not a really accurate description of reality. They point up certain things and hide others. So there's no way you can say that any one map of Dharma is any more correct than any other map of Dharma. Now, this is a real misunderstanding of maps. Different maps have different purposes, and some maps are accurate as far as their purpose is concerned, and some are not. In fact, you want a map to highlight certain things and to hide others, 
Otherwise, if there's too much information on the map, it's useless. It's like a map to a fire escape in a hotel. What you want is an accurate depiction of where you are and where you go and where the fire escape is. That's all you need to know about the hotel. You don't need to know the structure. You don't need to know all the other rooms. But you do want a map that takes you to the right door. It's right there that we can say that there are accurate maps of the Dharma and inaccurate maps of the Dharma. There are correct and incorrect maps of the Dharma. Because some of them will take you to a door that opens up and there's a solid wall. You can't get out. Others will take you to a door, you open it up, and you fall five or six stories. So the Buddha offers us an accurate map of how we put things together and how we can learn how to take them apart. He teaches us how to put concentration together. Virtue, concentration, discernment, all, all these things are things we put together. Our intention to observe the precepts, that's something we put together. The precepts themselves are sketches, but they're very useful sketches. If they were too complex, too detailed, they'd be hard to hold by, because they'd be hard to remember. Because the times when you're tempted to break the precepts are times when you, the mind is got hormones burning in your ears. You need to remember, no killing, period, no stealing, no illicit sex, no lying. You need something simple at those times. So it's a useful sketch. Same with concentration. The Buddha says, focus on the breath. Those sixteen steps, they don't tell you much. We're lucky we have a John Lee to flesh out some of the details. But even his instructions leave a lot for us to explore. Again, he gives us a sketch. As he once said, the ways of the mind are more than many. So many you could never put them in a book. But he does give us a book, which is a brief sketch of what the basic principles are. So we focus on the breath, ignore a lot of other things right now, but try to be aware of the breath as a whole body process. Get a sense of your awareness as a whole body awareness, not confined to any one point. You may have one point that's more prominent than the others, but you do want to spread your awareness around from that point, because you'll be observing the mind. You'll be looking for new things in the mind. It's like going out in the forest. Trackers advise you to develop something they call scatter vision, where you try to take in the whole visual field all at once. But then, of course, there'll be little clues that you're looking for. If you're looking for mushrooms, there are certain things you look for. Whatever the plant you're looking for, there will be certain things that you want to take note of. And even in that em enlarged frame of vision, there are th going to be things you're going to ignore. Because when you're focused on the breath, what else are you looking for? You're looking for anything that will take you away from the breath. See it as a disturbance. Because you've made up your mind you don't want to go there, that makes it a lot easier to see these disturbances simply as little becomings forming in the mind. And you can watch the process as you try to nip the becomings in the bud. You see more and more clearly that the stages by which the mind creates a state of becoming. And this is where the concentration shades into discernment. You 
Again, the Buddha has you focus on certain things. What is it about the becoming that attracts you? What's the allure? And as the Buddha said, all the aggregates have their allure. They have their pleasant side. If they didn't have their pleasant side, we wouldn't be attached to them. But for the sake of letting them go, you don't focus on what you like about them. You focus primarily on what the drawbacks are, and that's where you bring in the perceptions of inconstancy, stress, not self. You do something called anupasana, where you make up your mind you're going to focus on one theme, and then you follow it through. It's like having a large tapestry that has a red thread going through, and you're going to follow just the red thread. So here again, it's a sketch. You're not looking at the whole tapestry. You want to see where the red thread goes. Because in the case of the perceptions, it'll take you to someplace important. a direct experience in the mind that is not a state of becoming, and it's not made up of aggregates. It's where you can put all the sketches aside. So focus on the points where the Buddha said are really important to focus on. Because he's the opposite of a magician. He's not trying to deceive you. He's pointing you to what's actually going on in the sense of how you're creating suffering and how you can put an end to it. That's the sketch he wants you to focus on, and he points directly to it. Our problem is that we want to go off and sketch other things. So pay attention to the Buddhist sketches. and then look inside to see what those sketches are pointing to. Sketch a path for yourself. Think of his teachings as a map, and then look at what you have inside yourself that corresponds to the markings on the map. Don't worry about the blank spaces. Focus on the markings. Because they're designed to take you to someplace special. A place where once you've arrived there, you wouldn't need maps anymore. You've got the real thing. <laughs>